Are you planning to take a Mediterranean cruise but don't know which one to choose? Let us help you. Morning everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea. Today we are talking about Mediterranean cruises. Hmm. So let's explore the different type and what to expect from each one. By the way, uh, now is a great time for you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Mm -hmm. That way you'll never miss one of our videos. Exactly. Let's start exploring the different types of areas of the Mediterranean. Uh, Western versus Eastern Mediterranean itineraries. Exactly. So Western Mediterranean itineraries are usually include cruises that are located west of Italy. So the Southern Mediterranean west of Italy. And they most likely depart from Barcelona or Rome Civita Vecchia. They visit Spain, France, Italy, Malta, Gibraltar, and so on. And so on, exactly. Mm. And then you have the Eastern Mediterranean cruises that focus on the Adriatic Sea and the Greek islands. And they usually depart from Athens or Venice, and uh, they visit Italy, Croatia, Montenegro, and Greece. And sometimes on longer cruises, they can go as far as Istanbul. Yeah, and then there's a combination of the two, mm. and they're generally longer cruise, 15 plus days, then they're called Mediterranean Medley or Mediterranean Explorer. And they can go from Barcelona to Athens or vice versa. Mm, they are fun. So you might be wondering, which ports are the best to visit in the Mediterranean? Well, every port is pretty unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has you know, lots of wonderful things to see. In general, the Western Mediterranean ports are more for people looking to visit cities uh, and cultural and archaeological sites. Yeah, while the Eastern Mediterranean cruises are better for people looking for to relax on the beach or swimming in the Med, in a nice Greek island. So these are the difference, the main difference. And now let's uh, explore which one are our favorite ports. Ah, yes, great idea. So, so let's start from the Western Mediterranean. Ports in the Western Mediterranean that we like are Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Barcelona is beautiful. beautiful city. La love walking around the La Rambla. Yeah, you don't need a car. You just, no, just yeah. walk from the port. Mm -hmm. Actually, we went to Por uh, Park Goel. It's yes, Park Goel. Park Goel is a very famous park in Barcelona designed by Gaudí. And that one requires a little bit of a transfer by taxi or by subway. But the rest of Barcelona... I think there. we walked there and then taxied back. No, we took a taxi there and subway back. We did? Yeah, it's mm. about five it was kilometers. Long. It was long. It's a long, long way. Yeah. The old medieval part of Barcelona is quite beautiful. I love it there. Mm -hmm. It's like so much fun. And everyone wants to go see, obviously, the Sagrada Familia. Yeah, exactly. That's, um, a, that's a bit of a stretch to walk there, but it's fun. I think so. I, mean, I, think, I think that ought to be the first place that people ought to walk to, at least younger people. Yeah. And then it builds up an appetite. Yeah, it's a long walk. And then you can stop at the market for lunch. It's beautiful. Exactly. There, yeah, yeah the, the market on La Rambla. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But go early. Yeah, because it gets really busy. Definitely. Another beautiful port, um, actually the port itself is not very beautiful, it's Livorno, but it's uh, <laughs> the gateway to Pisa and Florence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing to see in there's Livorno. There's nothing to see in Livorno, but Pisa and Florence are very short, uh, short distance from Livorno. Yeah. You can take a transfer from the port to Pisa, it takes about 20 minutes to get there, or Florence, you have to take a train or, yeah. or a transfer. The key is one or the other. Yeah, one or the other. Because oftentimes the cruise lines will have uh, a tour for both in one day, and no. there's just no time to see anything. No, you, like Florence itself, it can take like days to visit all. Like so, yeah. you won't see anything really. No. Just take your time. Good advice. Which one is your favorite port? Well, I like uh, I like Genova as well. I mean, I remember Genova having the the focaccia. Oh yeah, Genova is yes. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That was a, that was an interesting that was an interesting mm -hmm. stop. Even though we live in Italy, uh, Genova is just not a city that we we mm. tend to visit. But it reminds me a little bit actually of Florence. The old part of the town is quite nice uh, with the Duomo, and mm. there's lots of cute restaurants that you can actually stop for lunch. It's sure, quite fun. Definitely. And then there's Civita Vecchia, which is the gateway to Rome. Right. Don't go to the McDonald's. Just take a trip to Rome and enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> it's about an hour outside Rome. You can take yeah. the train there, you take the, the train to the downtown Rome. It's like only right. an hour train ride, like really convenient. Exactly. Now, if you have never been to Rome before and you find yourself at the port of Civitavecchia wondering what you should do, 
Well, I highly recommend that you do a little bit of research. Yeah. Because if you just arrive and you take a transfer willy-nilly into Rome, you're going to be like, you're going to be overwhelmed. You will have no yeah. idea what you're looking it's at. It's a very overwhelming city. So, and, and again, in Rome, be focused. Don't go, don't try to go everywhere. Just pick three or four main landmarks mm -hmm. and visit those. Exactly. It's impossible to see everything in one day. Yeah, definitely. But you can see, you know, probably the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain. And the Pantheon. The Pantheon. And probably you can go, you know, maybe, maybe uh, the to Vatican? the Vatican. Maybe. Yeah, not, maybe. The, not the Vatican Museum, no. No, take, no. That takes a day. No, you can go to the square. Yeah. So, yeah. And I like Palma de Mallorca. That was another fun port. Yeah, we got to visit the uh, President Palace. Yeah, the King's Palace. Yeah, the King's Palace. The King's Palace, King's Palace, Palace right. Mallorca and the mm -hmm. Duomo is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's such a cute little island and it was beautiful. Like it was February and it was yeah. like mid twenty. Yeah, we did that on a Costa cruise. I know. I love that, that mm -hmm. stuff. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, well these were some of our favorite yeah, Western exactly. Western Mediterranean mm -hmm. ports. Let's go, go to the Eastern Mediterranean. All right. Well then we have Venice. Who doesn't like Venice? Yeah, who doesn't love Venice? Venice is a spectacular place, and, and uh, you know, if you come to Venice, uh, one of the things that you might try doing is row the gondola. Row the gondola, yeah. Mm. yeah with, a, with a little schmoozing of the gondola. Yeah, you, you, might need a, you might need like a... <laughs> I was going to say a Benjamin, but <laughs> <laughs> sure, you could try. <laughs> exactly. No, uh, Venice is definitely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Again, try to explore the city and don't try to do everything in one day. It's impossible. Right. Exactly. So pick a few little spots and go there. And go and eat those cicchetti. Oh, cicchetti, yeah. Yes. Oh, those, those are beautiful. Delicious. Absolutely. Unfortunately, there are rumors that Venice is not going to be a cruise port anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, they might move the cruise ship outside Venice because mm -hmm. of the environmental issues. So that might not be a port in, in the Med anymore. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, I will see. Another so, port on the Eastern Mediterranean, Athens. Athens is, well, I mean, <laughs> it's like the Rome of Greece, right? I, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's just another one of those cities that you, you need to go there with a plan mm -hmm. or with a guide. Actually, uh, I did deeply enjoy doing the hop on hop off in mm -hmm. Athens. That was perfect, actually. The hop on hop off bus uh, is usually uh, a, a fan favorite because you get to see a lot of nice things and then you can stop and they also have a guided they have a guide you put your your phone yeah. exactly you can listen to what uh, you know what the, the guide talk about what they're what you're seeing and you can catch it right in the port so mm -hmm. it's very convenient you catch the up on up off right in the port which is about half an hour outside downtown mm -hmm. and it takes you in downtown and shows all the stops and you can stop in one place and get on another place it's perfect actually right one thing that you have to do in Athens buy the ticket for the part and on in advance yeah, I, otherwise the line yeah, the, the it just goes on and on. It's just like uh, ridiculous. Unless the cruise sells it, but if the cruise sells it, it's going to be far more expensive. I went on the website, in the website, and it took me like five minutes, and we arrived at the yeah. Parthenon, yeah. we our barcode, yeah. and yeah. went in, no problem. Yeah, and we did that one on our own. Yeah, yeah, put it on our own. And then no. who doesn't like Santorini? Oh, Santorini is spectacular. It's so beautiful. It's spectacular. Um, so so beautiful. Take the gondola if you don't like donkeys, uh, or if your mobility is a little is a little wonky. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> we were walking down the cliff where the donkeys are, and uh, was slightly slippery due to donkey droppings. Mm, donkey droppings. <laughs> this one slipped in, in the, the donkey, donkey dropping. <laughs> No, no, no. In, no. in 40 degrees Celsius, uh, the donkey droppings are slightly... You know, this one is never mad. He's never mad, but that day he was furious. What? He said, I'm never going down this one again. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I kind of agree. Look, the last time I was there was in 2007 or something like that. And it was a lot different in my memory. Uh, but yeah, no. Yeah, take, probably because take, you didn't sleep in the donkey dropping. That's what probably. Probably different. no, it was a lot less slippery. Mm, definitely, yeah, well, definitely. Awful. So, so yeah. Oh, well, maybe I might ride the donkey one. Yeah, yeah, ride maybe. The donkey. I'll take the donkey. Yeah. <laughs> and and how about Mykonos? Oh, Mykonos. Oh. Now Mykonos is freaking expensive. Really expensive. Like, but it's really beautiful. Really expensive. Really beautiful. But if you go to, if you dock at the new port in Mykonos, mm -hmm. there's a beach right there, and it's just crew members that know this. And it's like five minutes walking. It's called Saint Stefano Beach. Yes, you don't have to take any 
nope. uh, transportation, nothing. Just walk there, just up the hill, down the hill. Yeah, and it cost almost nothing. I think we paid like 20 euros for the entire day. Oh, it was beautiful. Um, and there's restaurants there, you can mm -hmm. sit there, have, yep. a, have a nice uh, Greek meal. It's yep. absolutely fantastic. And the water's fantastic the water's and fantastic. warm. What do you mean? What? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, because, it's because they have these fast ferries that go by and close by and, and they make these gigantic waves. So but actually it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. This wave exactly. actually quite interesting. Yeah, it's neat. Um, oh, I love that beach. It was really mm, beautiful. Definitely. Yeah. And then we went to Crete. I was mm, really loved yes. Crete. It was beautiful there yeah. too. They're yeah. very honest people there. Very nice. Very on I saw very honest people. You remember when I lost my cell phone? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I know. They brought it back to the ship. I know. Incredible. It was really, really nice. Yeah. No, we love both the Southern and the Mediterranean. We deeply enjoyed them both. And we can't wait to be back. go back. Can't wait to go back. I mean, we're we're, we're we're on standby as soon yeah. as soon as we're able. Uh, we're you're gonna be gone, and you're gonna exactly. see a video of us and on a ship. Exactly, and, <laughs> it, and it won't be it won't be old videos. It'll be new videos. Maybe exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably see this uh, beer roll footage like a few times. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, guys, which one was your favorite out of all of these? Exactly. And if you want a complete list of all the ports on the Mediterranean, follow the link in the description. There's going to be a ex super extensive list of every single port in the Med that you can visit with lots of description. That's great advice. Now, you might be wondering, uh, should I do a one, two, or three week cruise? Or how long should you be on a Med cruise? Yeah, three. In our opinion, the longer the better, especially if you're coming all the way from North America. The minimum you should plan is a two-week cruise because the first couple of days, you're going to be dealing with jet lag. Yep. And by the way, if you want to know our tips with dealing with jet lag, check out the video. Yeah, one-week cruises are usually cheaper, mm. and, but they don't visit as many ports. Like two, three-week cruises, they visit way more ports. So we tried both, seven days, and we tried 21, and we loved them both, but 21 mm -hmm. was absolutely fantastic. And you remember, you become part of the crew. Absolutely. So in our opinion, the longer the better. So book the longer you can afford, and you will really, really like it. Mm -hmm. Another thing you want to consider is if you should take a one-way cruise or a return cruise. The difference is very simple. In a one-way cruise, you go from one port to another. So you embark in Barcelona, you disembark in Suite Vecchia. While on a return cruise, the embarkation port and disembarkation port are the same. So Venice to Venice, for example, Athens to Athens. Advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of a one-way cruise is the fact that you'll be able to visit more ports, as these type of cruises are usually longer than seven days. The biggest disadvantage of a one-way cruise is the fact that the flight might be slightly more expensive since you arrive, you arrive at one airport and you leave from a different one. If you choose a return cruise, these types are generally one week long and they circle around six or seven ports in the same area. For example, they're more popular in the Greek islands or the Adriatic, and they have the advantage that you're flying in and out of the same airport, making it easier to find a cheaper flight. They're also cheaper most of the time because they're a yeah. shorter cruise, yeah. so that's, that's a big advantage. Mm. Last thing to consider is what is the best season to cruise the Mediterranean? Most mainstream cruise lines run the Mediterranean itineraries between April and November. And if you're looking to enjoy the sun, swim in the Mediterranean, mm. or go to the beach, the best time is the middle of the summer, June to September, mm. when the, wa the water is yeah. warm and uh, the weather is warm the, and the sea is usually calmer because there's no chance of storming mm -hmm. in the season. Unfortunately, this time of the year is also the most expensive and the most crowded. It's also the hottest time of the year. It can get to over 40 degrees Celsius, making visiting cities a little bit uncomfortable. So if you're looking for visiting cities and doing more sightseeing, uh, the shoulder season is a better option for you. In fact, um, early spring and the fall are cheaper, they're less crowded, the temperatures are better. Um, but on the downside, the weather might be more unpredictable and chances of rain are higher and the sea can be rough. Yeah. And there are two main um, cruise lines, the Costa and the MSC, which are uh, European-based, that they do the Med mm -hmm. year-round, even in the winter. The Mediterranean cruise in the winter is a completely different experience, still very enjoyable. In particular, if you took a cruise that goes way south, like to the Greek island, for example, 
chances of the temperature can be in the mid twenty, in the mid eighteen to twenty degrees mm -hmm. Celsius, and it's a great time to visit because there's way less crowds. Mm -hmm. So Santorini, Venice, they're way less crowded than they usually are mm -hmm. in the middle of the season. And on top of that, those cruises are generally very inexpensive because it's off season mm -hmm. and there's not many tourists. So it's a great way to visit Europe for a much lower price. Well, that's good advice. Guys, we hope that uh, these pointers will help you pick your next Mediterranean cruise. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave us a comment below. Yes. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.